Hello and welcome everyone. Today we're going to talk about errors. When we create new products, the design of error messages is rarely the first thing on our list. We tend to focus more on happy paths. So we leave error states until the very end of the design process. However, the way error messages are designed can have a tremendous impact on users. Bad error handling paired with useless error messages can fill users with frustration and can make users abandon our products. Let's discuss five important rules worth remembering when you design error states. The rule number one. Prevention is better than cure. The best error messages is the one that never shows up. If you design apps, you likely know where users can face errors. For example, filling out a form is likely one of them. You need to design the product to prevent errors from happening in the first place. It's possible to achieve that using the following techniques. Provide helpful constraints. Helpful constraints will prevent users from making the wrong choice. Let me give you a few examples. First, the white of the input field can tell the user how many symbols they need to type. For example, when we design a zip code field field, it's not need to make the field too large, because it will create a false impression that the zip will have many symbols. Second, you need to eliminate unnecessary error states. Suppose you design a hotel booking website and use a search form that allow people to specify the dates for reservation. There is no sense in making past dates available for selection and displaying an error message if user selects dates that aren't in the past. It's better to prevent users from choosing an incorrect date. As shown in the booking example, you can use a date selector that allows users only to select today's date or date in the future. Notice that the calendar grays out past dates so users can choose only proper dates. It will force users to pick the date range first. We can specify the type of the characters users can provide. For example, credit card form should not allow users to type alphabetic characters in the card number field. The app should provide relevant type of a keyboard depending on the type of a field the user has to fill out. Setting expectation is another powerful technique. When you have a specific requirements about your user's input, you need to share the requirements with users up front. For example, if you have a specific set of requirements for password, you should provide them before the user clicks submit button. The requirements should be clear and visible as possible for the user. It's also possible to pre-populate some fields with the most common choices or personalized data. For example, many airlines' websites pre-populate departure airport based on the user geolocation that data. Last but not least, we should design for use case when users wrongly triggered potentially dangerous actions. Users might not be aware of the full impact of the actions they are making. So letting them know what will happen next will help them prevent the problem from happening in the first place. For example, when the user aims to delete important information or assets, this confirmation dialog will give the user a chance to pause and think about the action. What makes an error message helpful? An example of what correct import, import is. If we ask the user to provide specific information such as tracking number, we can add a hint with an example of a correct input. It's possible even to make it better by providing the input before the actual showing error message, like in this example from Royal Mail. Royal Mail offers uh, a tracking code example so the user can understand the expected formatting before they try to enter the one. Rule number two. Never rely on the red color alone to convey the meaning. When we think about the error message, the red color is the first thing that comes to our mind. Color works on an instinctual level. So adding red color to messages, yellow to warning messages, and green to success messages, incredibly powerful. 
but using color alone will make the user interfaces less accessible for different group of users. Here is how people with red and green color blindness see a form that uses only color as an indicator for error. The group of users won't be able to overcome the error. So, it's always better to use red color along with other visual indicators such as icon and relevant error message. When the user scans the form, the icon will stand out and naturally draw the eye to what must be fixed. Rule number three. You need to write helpful error messages. Sounds easy, right? Yet a lot of error messages in products are remarkably generic. They just state that something went wrong, but don't give the users much information about what exactly. Good error message guides the user to a solution. It tells users not only what went wrong, but also why. Here is how MailChimp, MailChimp makes error message helpful for users. The message clearly explains the problem and suggests how to fix it. The words in error message should be carefully selected. You need to avoid using stop words, words that don't add much value to user. Here is a list of stop words that Gov UK recommends to avoid in error text. First, technical jargon like unspecified error or errors with specific code. Words like forbidden, illegal, you forgot and prohibited. Please, because it implies a choice. Sorry, because it doesn't help fix the problem. Valid or invalid, because they do not add anything to the message. And humor. Words like oops can be very annoying. In product design, we often use the term user error. Personally, I don't like this term because it implies that it's the user fault when they do something wrong. Of course, error might be unavoidable, but a good error message never makes a mistake, seems like a failure of end user. It's always better to use neutral phrasing that doesn't blame user. Rule number four, right placement for validation output. Error messages displayed in the wrong place can confuse users or be simply overlooked. Many products show a validation summary at the top of the form and let the user know that there are errors that need to be fixed on the page. While the summary can give the user a better understanding of all errors in the form, it's better to avoid using it. Why? Because the summary makes issues look more complicated than they really are and the errors are displayed out of the context. The user has to scroll down to find the relevant field. And the last but not least, the summary attracts too much attention. It's always better to show errors in the context of the action. The principle of proximity will make it easier for users to digest the information. For example, if you want to inform the user about the error occurring in a particular field, show it next to the field. Error message is the best position to the right hand side of the input for desktop or below the input field for mobile. Rule number five, validation on the fly. User disliked going through the form only to find out at submission that they made an error. It's incredibly frustrating when you complete a long form and once you've pressed submit button, you are rewarded with multiple error messages. That's why an error message should occur immediately and inform users about the correctness of provided data right after the user has entered it. Real-time validation, also known as inline validation, immediately informs users about correctness of provided data. This approach allows users to correct the errors they make faster and without leaving, without leaving the state. As soon as the user has finished filling in the form, the indicator should appear nearby the field and inform the user about the correctness of provided data. 
but avoid showing the error message until the user has finished with the field and move to the next field. Forms that perform the validation during the data entry punish the users as soon as they start entering the data. It can be very annoying to say, see an error message before being given the opportunity to finish typing. It's better to perform data validation once the user has finished typing or after timeout or move to the next field in a form. To evaluate your error handling strategy, you also need to measure three things. First, you need to track the number of mistakes user make in a user journey. Second, you need to track average recovery time, how much time it takes for the user to fix a particular mistake. Last but not least, you need to measure success rate to understand how certain errors impact on your conversion rate. The best error message is the one that never shows up. It's always better to prevent errors from happening in the first place by guiding the users in the right direction ahead of time. But when errors do arise, well-designed error handling not only informs users about the correctness of provided data, but also prevents users from feeling if you like this video, please subscribe.